Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new here. My name is Harris and I am a final year medical student at the Medical University of Plovdiv in Bulgaria. As you can tell by the title, I wanted to create a video detailing my own experience of studying medicine in Eastern Europe, hopefully to help any other prospective students who may be wishing or thinking to apply in the future. This is going to be quite a detailed video, so feel free to use the timestamps in the description box to skip ahead. And please bear in mind that the information that I'm going to give is based entirely on my own experience. It may differ for you depending on the country in which you're applying, the medical university that you are choosing, and whether or not you apply with an agency or if you apply directly. So the first question I get asked is why Eastern Europe? For me, after my A-levels, I was unsuccessful in attaining a place in a UK medical school. So I had the option of either taking a gap year or looking elsewhere to study. After a bit of research online, I found that there were vacancies available to study an English taught medical program in countries like Czech Republic, Romania and Bulgaria. I decided on Bulgaria after speaking to a number of UK students that were studying here and I found that there were options to study in five different medical schools. So these were Sofia, Plovdiv, Varna, Stara Zagora and Pleven. I looked only at the first three just because they were the most popular amongst UK students and I decided to stick with Plovdiv just because I quite liked the city, it had a good mix of culture, history and food and it was also accessible with a nearby airport and quick access to the capital, Sofia. I'd also like to point out at this point that the courses are English taught medical programs that are GMC approved which means that they are accredited by the medical body which oversees the quality of doctors working in the NHS. So that just basically means that even though the teaching style and the course structure may differ, the quality of teaching and the content is deemed sufficient enough to practice medicine in the UK. So in terms of the application process, it depends entirely on the country in which you're applying and the institution that you are applying to. Since I am in Plovdiv, I'll just provide information about applying to this university specifically, but I will try to attach links in the description to anyone that is thinking of applying elsewhere. So essentially, the application process depends entirely on whether or not you apply with an agency or if you are applying directly. An agency is just a company which provides a service to help register and transfer students from the UK to your country of choice. Typically they would deal with the paperwork, translation and whatnot and they would help accelerate your application process. There are several different types and they have their own pros and cons. They do charge different rates based on your qualifications, your grades and the time that you are applying. Again I will list these in the description box so you can check them if you are interested. For me personally I didn't bother going with an agency just because I didn't want to shell out £3,000 and also because I wanted to see Bulgaria for myself to ensure that I was happy before making a decision of spending the next six years of my life here. So the information that I am going to give can be found on the university website but I'll just explain it just to help make it a little bit more clearer. Since I didn't apply with an agency this was all of the information that I used to prepare my documents for my application. So to start off with, the first document that you need is a letter from your school which states that you are able to continue studying in higher education. For me personally, I went to a sixth form, I spoke to my head of sixth form and I asked them to write up a letter to state that I had completed my AS and A2 level exams and upon completion of those exams, I was able to continue studying into university. And with this document, all it's stating is that you have completed 12 years of education prior to attending university and it needs to be signed by a member of staff in your high school and then also stamped as well. The next document that you need is a certificate to show that you have studied, completed and obtained marks in biology and or chemistry. For this university they expect you to have sat at least one of the two subjects for an A-level and then the other would be accepted as long as you sat it in either your A-level, your AS level or as a GCSE. If you have failed one of these subjects in the past you would not be eligible to apply. For any applicants who have done a BTEC or a foundation science, again this is unfortunately not accepted and you would not be able to apply. In case you do want to apply earlier before receiving your A-level results, I think they do accept a statement of provisional results. However, you will have to check with the university just to make sure that this is something that they accept. 
The third thing that you would need applies only to non-native speakers of the English language. This is an English language proficiency test at a level of B1. And there are a number of different tests that you can take. So there's the Cambridge Language Assessment, IELTS Academic Test, the Teaching of English as a Foreign Language, and IBT or PBT. But these only apply to non-native speakers. So for any native speakers in the UK, you would not be required to take it. I've actually recently had to sit the IELTS academic test for my application back to the NHS. So if anybody would be interested in how I prepared for it, the structure, etc, what to expect, let me know and I will try to make a video on that. So besides everything I've mentioned, you would also need your standard copy of a valid ID or a passport. They also require four recent photographs of you in order for your application to go through. I also forgot to mention earlier that your exam certificate and the letter from your high school that states that you can study in university need to be legalised. They need to be translated in Bulgarian and then notarised. Legalised just means that they need to be a postal fix. You can get your documents legalised by searching up an apostle agency on Google Maps and just get them stamped and then following that you can get them translated and notarised either in Bulgaria or in the UK. And finally once you have done all of that you can fill in the application form on the university website and try to get all of your documents submitted before August 30th. After you have submitted your application, you just have to prepare and sit for your entry exam in biology and chemistry. And then in September, they release a ranking of all the students and that comprises of your A-level grades along with your performance in the entry exams. And then the final thing you need to prepare for is an entrance exam in biology and chemistry. This is just an exam which tests that you have the foundation in both sciences. There are several different dates for the entrance exam and they can be carried out both online and in person. It's important that you do try to apply early just because spaces are limited. And again, I will provide some resources in the description box below. As far as I can remember, the questions were made up of MCQs and open-ended questions and they were very similar to the content that you had covered at AS and AT level, so they weren't too difficult. So that pretty much covers the whole application process. As I said before, this was based on my own experience. However, the process is roughly the same amongst all the universities in Bulgaria, but just double check with them because the time scale and the deadlines may differ slightly. If you do want more information, I would recommend you to contact the university directly as they would be able to advise you in the best possible way. Regarding the course, it is a master's degree and it comprises of six years of full-time education split into 10 semesters of teaching and then the final year is a 12-month clinical internship. In general, the first five years consist of seminars and small groups of about 10 to 15 students as well as your lectures and then from third year onwards you would have most of your seminars conducted in hospitals or small clinics to help with patient exposure and clinical practice. For me, it was a little bit different because of the COVID-19 pandemic. We had most of our seminars moved online, but in the last 12 months, I think they started to move classes back in person. Regarding subjects, I'll just list out all of the modules that we cover on a year-to-year -year basis. Starting with first year, we have anatomy, biology, chemistry, biophysics, histology, Latin, Bulgarian and sport. In second year, along with anatomy, we have biochemistry, medical psychology, microbiology, physiology and social medicine. Third year is when it really starts to pick up. We have an introductory course to internal medicine, clinical pathology, pathophysiology, hygiene and public health, clinical laboratory, pharmacology, social medicine, occupational disease and toxicology, radiology and general surgery. Fourth year is an extension of third year. We have cardiology, neurology, dermatology, hematology, pulmonology and ENT. We have specialised surgery including paediatric surgery, maxillofacial surgery and cardiovascular surgery, clinical immunology, special surgery, orthopaedics, urology and obstetrics and gynaecology. A lot of these are carried into fifth year with the addition of anesthesiology, paediatrics, parasitology, forensics, psychiatry, oncology and infectious disease and epidemiology. Sixth year, which is currently where I am, is a clinical internship made up of five rotations over the course of 12 months. These are in internal medicine, surgery, paediatrics, obstetrics and gynaecology, 
and public and social health, which includes infectious disease, epidemiology, hygiene and social medicine. We also have a three week free elective internship, which basically is at the end of the fifth rotation. And it just means we can go back to any of the previous five rotations and just complete something that we are interested in for the remainder of our 12 months. Between years one to five, in almost all subjects, you will have inter-semester tests. These are just mini exams that will test your knowledge on the module that you have just covered. They occur every three to six weeks. They are important because they do count towards your final mark. They usually consist of a multiple choice question paper or an open-ended question paper. As long as you stay on top of your work, in general, they're okay to pass. With regards to our finals, the testing is a little bit more rigorous because we have several different methods of examination. It starts with a practical element. So this could be either identifying an anatomical structure on a cadaver, or it could be performing a physical exam on a patient. We then move on to a question paper, usually a multiple choice style question or open-ended questions. These questions may actually be similar to the inter-semester tests that you do throughout the year. And they typically require you to pass at least 60% of the paper in order for you to continue on to the next stage. The next part of examination is an essay style question. You're given a topic of anything from your syllabus in your module. You have to bring like, everything you know. So this could be your definition, etiology, risk factors, epidemiology, clinical manifestation, diagnosis, differential diagnosis, treatment and prophylaxis. And then following that, you would have an oral discussion with a professor or a panel of doctors, and they would ask you anything and everything from your syllabus. Once you have passed, you would be given a score ranked between 3 to 6, 3 being satisfactory or 60%, 4 being 70, 5, 80, and then 6 would be anything above 90. Obviously, you want to get as close to 90 as possible in all of your exams, so study hard. If, in the unfortunate event, you are unable to pass your exam, there are opportunities for you to resit, but these are usually done later in the year, around July or September. You can also carry your exams from the previous year. However, I think it is limited to maybe two to three exams. Try to avoid it if you can, because the dates of the reset may clash with the exams of the following year. That in third year, pathophysiology and general surgery are considered stop exams. So these are exams that are compulsory to pass in order for you to progress onto the next year. Okay, so that pretty much covers information regarding the actual university and the course. I want to briefly talk about the lifestyle and sort of the adjustment to Bulgaria as a whole. Apartments, bills, um, shopping, etc. But very quickly, I know many people probably know this. The accessibility between the UK and Bulgaria is very easy. There are several different European airlines which fly on a daily basis. Ryanair, EasyJet, British Airways, Wizz Air. From Bulgaria, you can fly from Sofia, Plovdiv and Burgas. And then they all fly to many places throughout the UK. London Heathrow. Stansted, Birmingham, Liverpool, Manchester and Dublin. Tickets cost around £100 but they can be as cheap as £20 if you book in advance and the flight time is about three, three and a half hours so it's not too far. Since you will be here for six years, it is important that you do find an apartment that is close to the university campus or the teaching hospitals. Although taxis and buses are very cheap here, it would be better to find a place that is within walking distance just because our classes sometimes involve us walking back and forth between different hospitals. You can find apartments using online Facebook groups, although if you are applying with an agency, I think they do help you with that. For me, I just went with Remax, which is an estate agency that I'd heard of before, and they set me up with a really nice apartment, and it's within close vicinity of the university. Apartments can be one bedroom, two bedroom, I think there are a couple of three bedroom apartments now, and the rent is approximately 250 to 450 pounds a month, but that obviously depends on where you're located and how new your accommodation is. Again, they're fairly inexpensive. Electricity is about £30 a month, water is about £10 to £15 a month, and then internet's about £10. I'm not too sure if you'll be able to use your mobile SIM here without incurring a charge thanks to Brexit, but if that is the case, there are several mobile operating networks that you can use, and again, they're super cheap, around £10 a month for a basic package. And the last thing I want to talk about is shopping. Plovdiv, they've got three main shopping malls with a bunch of different shops, so for kitchenware, homeware, clothing. And of course, they've got your standard supermarkets like Lidl and Kaufland for your groceries. 
And a very popular question which applies to Muslims is are there any halal restaurants or butchers? Yes, there are a few restaurants. There are halal butchers that you can buy chicken or meat. The only problem is they are very busy, so it's important that you get there early or you do order in advance. One thing that many students do here, including myself, is you would prepare food in the UK, freeze it, put it in a freezer bag, bring it over, buy a suitcase, and then once you land here, you would just stick it in your freezer. That food would be good to go for the next few weeks, and that would help save you time from cooking and preparing, etc. So yeah, that pretty much covers everything that I wanted to discuss. The topics that I went through were typical questions that I had when I was applying and I couldn't really find any uh, concrete answers. So hopefully for anyone that is watching, I hope this video was of some help. If you do have any other questions, feel free to leave a comment down below and I will try my best to answer them. Like I said before, I'll put a lot of links and resources in the description box which you can check out. But as I mentioned earlier, if there is anything that you are uncertain of with regards to applying, the best thing to do would be to contact the university directly. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to share this with any other students that may be considering applying. Feel free to like, comment, wherever, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.